Hello, dears, and welcome to Al-Husseini Virtual Lab, Pathology Talks, Tips, and Practical Tips. Today, I'm going to share with you a very interesting case of glioblastoma showing constitutional mismatch repair deficiency. So this is a case of a 12-year-old boy who presented with left parietal brain tumor mass that was resected and showed a highly cellular tumor growing in an exoid background, showing this very characteristic tumor giant cells with acidophilic cytoplasm. There is another one here, apoptosis, as well as microvascular uh, proliferation. There is another uh, uh, focus of the tumor with abnormal mitotic figure uh, present, as well as the marked microvascular proliferation. And again, the mixoidish background and the tumor cells showing this abundant acidophilic cytoplasm. There wasn't uh, uh, evidence of necrosis in this tumor, but remember, you do not need uh, to have necrosis if you uh, have a microvascular proliferation in order to call a case high grade glioma consistent with a glioblastoma. So the tumor cells showed only focal positivity with the GFAB stain, but they were strongly and diffusely positive with OLIC2 immunohistochemistry, and we have the microvascular proliferation beautifully highlighted here with negative staining. The OLIC2 positive nuclear staining would support that this is a glial tumor or consistent with a glioblastoma. Now, ATRX showed loss of the nuclear stain in the presence of internal positive control, which are the endothelial cells, and this would be consistent with a mutant ATRX. P53, strong diffuse positivity in the tumor cells, including the multinucleated tumor giant cells, as well as the um, mononuclear tumor cells. What is really important and the message from this uh, case in particular is that in patients uh, who are young, uh, children, adolescents, and even young adults, it's now recommended always to perform mismatch repair uh, proteins on the brain tumors in order to look for evidence of mismatch repair deficiency in particular, the constitutional mismatch repair deficiency. And it's very important to know how to read those immunohistochemical stains because this is different from the way we read the mismatch repair deficiency proteins in the cases of Lynch. In Lynch tumors, because we have germline mutation, in one allele, while somatic mutation in the other allele, we have loss of a nuclear staining of any of the proteins of the MMR proteins uh, by immunohistochemistry in the presence of internal positive control. However, in the constitutional mismatch repair deficiency uh, syndrome, or the other name is the biallelic uh, um, mismatch repair deficiency syndrome, there is loss of the nuclear stain in the normal, uh, in the normal, these are the vessels as well as the tumor cells. So the first reaction would be, this is not working, this stain is not working. I have to repeat it because I have to look for the positive internal control. In constitutional mismatch repair deficiency, there is loss of both alleles by germline mutation. Because of that, there is loss of the expression of the protein in the normal as well as in the tumor cells. Now, once we have the deficiency of the MSH6, we have to do the MSH to immunohistochemistry, and here there is retention of the nuclear stain in both the normal as well as the tumor cells, meaning there is no mutation in the MSH2, and there was no mutation in PMS2 or MLH1, which I'm not showing. So in this case, actually, if we want to sum it up, we have a high-grade glioma with very prominent microvascular proliferation, and those multinucleated tumor giant cells with acidophilic cytoplasm, very characteristic of the mismatch repair deficient high-grade gliomas, in particular, the constitutional mismatch repair deficient tumors, 
And what we see once we apply the immune histochemistry, there is loss of the nuclear stain in the tumor as well as in the normal component while the, the, the mismatch repair deficient in this case, uh, proficient, I mean, in this case, the MSH2 was retained in both the tumor as well as the normal. And these high-grade gliomas, they tend to show P53 uh, abnormal or apparent expression. So the final diagnosis in this case is high-grade glioma consistent with the glioblastoma, CMMRD deficient, CNSWHO grade four. Uh, in the uh, caption uh, of the video, there is a link to a very nice article in which we described our experience with the high-grade gliomas in uh, pediatric age group with cases showing this very characteristic syndrome and the associated uh, clinical manifestations that would be important actually to pinpoint because it has this diagnosis has important implication on the patient uh, him or herself since they tend to develop other types of tumors, in particular in the colorectum, colorectal carcinomas and adenomas, leukemias, Number two, these patients should not be treated with uh, timozolomide because of resistance to the treatment. And number three, because of implication on the rest of the family members, since those patients and their families should, families should undergo uh, genetic counseling. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.